Hello and welcome everyone to another one of my videos. This is a video that has multiple purposes at the same time. It is on the one hand a tutorial on how to get a workaround for track freeze in Bitwig and it works. It works 100%. It's just weird and very complicated. And it's also a feature request for the Bitwig team to improve on that because it's weird and complicated. So let's get started. I'm starting by copying out my aim and break to this bar. And I'll also do that with one of these tracks. I only use this one. Now, before getting started, just nice track colors. So let's make this a loop, CTRL and L. And now I wanna get started with some of the situations where you would want to have track freeze or something like that. First of all, I need to create a situation where it would make sense. So let's say you have a filter on this track. And now you want it to be side chained by some audio. But we want to make this a little bit more complicated now, because this would be too easy. We know a real Bitwig situation looks a bit more complicated than that. For example, you could have a situation where you have kick drum going on. Maybe a kick drum that also plays the same rhythm as in the break. Okay, it doesn't need to be the most beautiful sound yet, so just a little bit of a demo. So let's call that kick. And this is our break fancy or something, because it sounds more fancy than the other break. Actually, we don't even need the other break for this example. So let's just keep it really simple for now because things will get complicated soon enough, you know. Okay, now you want to freeze this. So your first impulse would maybe be to just bounce in place. So what happened now? What? Nothing changed. And that was unexpected when I did it the first time. Because I thought if you bounce something to itself, then it will still consider the effects and just bounce to itself so you can have the same effect chain again. I thought that because I saw a lot of videos where people used a technique like that to make a heavy sound design and I thought that the Bitwig team would just encourage that kind of workflow with this feature, but apparently Bounce in place is only meant to stick together all the different little audio files that you might have. Let's say these are all different audio files and if you were to actually um, put them together, you could bounce and place them to just one audio file. So that is the entire idea of bounce in place. So apparently we have to use bounce, prefix, <coughs> now what did that do? Let's just solo this one and disable this track and enable this track and play it back. So there was no help at all because it also did not consider the effects. You probably already assumed that this would happen. So let's instead skip pre-fader and instead immediately use post-fader. Because I can tell you pre-fader would have been no use here. But wait. Oh. Okay, I, I accidentally had solo on. So when bouncing this track, it didn't consider this track. 
even though that might not make a lot of sense. So now it did. Now let's deactivate this track with Alt A and playback. So now we have already fulfilled multiple requirements for good track freeze. One of which is that you can free up resources, which we did by disabling this track temporarily. And one of the requirements of good track freeze is that you still end up with the same sound when you're playing it back. And one of the requirements for good track freeze is that you can always just go back to your resources um, and to your, you know, effects and keep on working on that by just enabling it again. And that this also still sounds the same. So this might already look like pretty good track freeze to some of you, but there is one big catch to it. It could always be that we just change the kick drum and then it makes no sense anymore. So obviously bouncing has a different meaning than track freeze. The meaning of track freeze is that um, you are always safe that whatever you do in your project you will not hurt the integrity of what it would be without the freeze. But bouncing something to a new track makes it actually independent from the things that you did with it um, before bouncing. So it's basically the opposite of track freeze in that regard. So we have to do more than that to actually get a track freeze that we can really compare to a proper track freeze. So let's get rid of this track again and enable this track again. So when I was endlessly talking to the Bitwig community about this, a lot of people have told me they don't need track freeze and that I'm overreacting. But when I actually got them to think about it, they gave me some really good ideas. One of which was to make a group. And I will call this group just the same name but with a capital letter at the beginning to make sure that I can differentiate it from the original track. Now I can use bounce and place on the group to bounce whatever goes into the group which is just one track and then I can disable the track. Now we have a really nice situation in which we don't need an additional track all the time but we can have a group that we can make smaller by you know minimizing it and that's a big advantage because if you think that you have to make a group for every track now then you want to at least be able to minimize it because Bitwig has a really high minimum height for its tracks so yeah if your projects get a bit bigger than this which is a very small project see we already have a group here and if all of these had their own groups then things would get very unorganized already. So this is already a kind of a crappy workaround, but it's actually um, doing us a favor here in terms of track freeze. So now we have we can have this track frozen and you know still enjoy the same sound. But we still have a little bit of a tricky situation because if we want to get back our original sound we cannot just activate it but we have to also remove the track from um, from the group and it looks the same as a group that has no track on it. So let me remove this and you will see that the waveform changes then maybe I think that there is a track here too and I remove it. Oops that was not a track that was the entire content of the group. So. That's how you can accidentally remove the stuff that is in your group if you are not careful. And you know, every time that something depends on being careful, I'm getting a little bit suspicious about it, if it's really a good workflow. So that's also one of the reasons why track freeze is encouraged further development of this DOM. Strongly encouraged, really. Now let's uh, try out a different situation. Say I want to use env lover, which is a MIDI triggered gate. Obviously we need MIDI input now. So let's use the node receiver. 
and get the notes from the kick. Ha. I actually forgot to select the kick here as well. I wanted to use the kick as the sidechain input, but that's my own fault. Nice. So it's always nice to put a MIDI triggered gate after something that already reacts to, s to a similar signal because it tightens up the, the thing. And that's what I just did with Nflover. Yeah, let's try to bounce in place. And then to deactivate this track. And we can see and hear that it actually works well. So let's go back to this configuration. But if you have noticed, normally if you froze a track, it should also freeze all the tracks that depend on it. For example, if we have a filter where the sidechain input comes from the kick, then it would only make sense if the kick was also automatically frozen the moment you freeze the brake because otherwise it would imply that you can still change the kick when the brake is changed which is not good for proper track freeze so let's actually set up the same thing for the kick and you th you see that i have to think i have to think about the things that i do and that's bad because i want to just feel the workflow and not think about it too much and people could argue, yeah, you just have to let it sink in a little bit more, but it's just way too many steps. Anyway, enough whining, let's actually do it. So, bounce in place. Now we have the stuff going on here. And we can deactivate the synthesizer and let's go. Oh, okay. So what is the issue that now happened? It is that Nflover doesn't get MIDI signals anymore. Because when you are activating a track, you're not only act deactivating the stuff that is on the track, the effects and the synthesizers, but you are also deactivating the MIDI input. Even though it might be that another track waits for that MIDI input. It's not existent anymore if you deactivate the track. So what you actually have to do is now for, oops, come on, let's go, come back. All right. Um, you have to put a chain everywhere. So everywhere where you might want to have track freeze, you have to put all the things in a chain, just in case that there is some MIDI involved. Because now instead of deactivating the entire track, you can deactivate the chain. Now you have the disadvantage that you cannot see just by looking at the track um, that it's currently deactivated anymore, but you have to actually click on it. You know, it looks like this if you have if you actually deactivate it and you can even see it when you are currently working on a different chain, but now you don't have this advantage anymore. So I just keep this recording here because it would sound the same if I rendered it again and now I'm playing it back. So if you are listening closely and probably on headphones or good speakers then you can hear that something is now happening again and you can also see it here. Sound is coming through again but the filter doesn't move now. Why does the filter not move again? This time it is because I still use the kick output from the actual track and not from the group. Because once you have a complicated situation like this, you have to make sure that you always use the group of the track to trigger the thing. And then it works again. So now we have actually reached 
the point of proper track freeze again and um <coughs> Yeah, I I don't want to say that this is terrible. There are definitely some advantages to this. Like for example, if you have a group of multiple things, then you can um, just do basically a track freeze of all of these things together, which is something that is not a thing in most of the So that's basically an additional feature that is not present in most trick freeze having doors. Wait, why did why did it still play this track? Okay, that was better. Um, so apparently you have to actively deactivate tracks so that they are not considered anymore even though you have put a bounce on the group i don't get it so this is really complicated as well apparently uh yeah you know i've spent a lot of time to just learn this track freeze alternative and it's still not very good and then i just wanted to show you an advantage of it and even that was kind of weird so I don't know. It's Bitwig is still the best door of all time, but this is the most terrible aspect about it. So Bitwig team, please improve it. Please. At the moment I'm saving up for a new computer even though the parts are currently terribly priced. I don't want to say it's entirely your fault because I'm also doing other stuff with my computer that needs CPU consumption like gaming and programming myself and stuff. But I am also asking for track freeze because of making music. I just want to make a lot of music and I don't want to be stopped by the limits of my computer if it doesn't have to be. So please put it further up in your to-do list to make track freeze happen. It would be very much appreciated.